Hello, everybody. I think uh, we're live. It's uh, Blaine Cast number 16. Let me uh, get out of this window. And uh, I know I've been calling it the backyard Blaine Cast, but uh, man, it's pretty hot in the backyard under my little uh, patio uh, setup. Well, I figured I would. Uh, to come back to the basement here. It's back to the basement, Blaine Cast. Oh, I had a slide for that. I wish I'd have used it. Let's just see if I can remember all the different things I got to do today on my own. My beloved son, uh, the DJ, who's been kind of uh, managing things uh, on the Zoom uh, remotely, uh, mostly. But uh, maybe we'll get him over here with the with a camera in hand. At some point. Anyway, he's off doing his own gig today. I'm on my own. And um, I did uh, say uh, I was going to try to preview a couple of uh, tunes that are not even entirely finished. I've been doing that. I uh, I hope uh, folks get a kick out of it. Uh, don't hold me to it because in the case of uh, one of these, I just still decided a key about two seconds ago and it'll probably change. But I'm calling it the Trump Trilogy, and I don't know what got over me. Uh, watching uh, TV, I guess, and uh, that guy, he's just uh, a lot of uh, a lot of songwriting uh, inspiration uh, emanates out of his mouth. And uh, now, uh, actually, I uh, did a bit of an editorial in the in the Blaine letter last night, and. So far, I've got uh, feedback uh, on both sides. Uh, I called it uh, the Great Divide. Uh, you can read the Blaine letter. Uh, I'll have it up on uh, my blog, Toronto Blues Diary, maybe after I get this out of the way. Uh, or you could go to brianblaine.com and subscribe to the Blaine letter, and you every month you would get to... Uh, Read a few words, uh, some diatribe or not. I don't know if you could call this a diatribe, but I called it the Great Divide, you know. And there was a time when I thought the Great Divide uh, in our culture was uh, the haves and the have-nots. And uh, then a lot of uh, have-nots uh, made their way up. Uh, I think, uh, what is it, Trudeau says, uh, you know, the middle class and those who are working towards becoming the middle class. Well, a lot of people got up to the middle class level, and they were not have-nots anymore. They, you know, they had a home, they had a car, they maybe had a cottage and a motorcycle. And uh, so, um, you know, I really uh, didn't think of it that way anymore. I'm still feel like I have not, but I've got a roof over my head. I got a car. I guess I'm a have. But here's where I'm making the great divide now. And it's um, the uh, folks that think uh, you ought to stick to your own kind and folks uh, that are just uh, happy to embrace uh, diversity and uh, be with a lot of people that are different from them. And uh, that uh, crosses over from haves and have-nots, I'm sure. There's a lot of people that want to stick to their own kind. And there's a lot of other people that think, why would you want to do that? Just always be around people that are thinking and uh, looking like you. So uh, I don't know if that's what inspired any of these tunes, but here, the first one was inspired by this uh, new press secretary that Trump took on, Kaylee. I watched her on her debut, and uh, I had to write this tune, and uh, I got a little bit of echo on it here. Well, we'll see how that works out. All right, let's pull up the words just in case. I know I've got it mostly memorized, but... He's got a fine first family, everybody toes the line. They only speak with his permission, and everything is always fine. He's so misogynistic, but women love him anyway. They can't be shocked by scandals and lies, cause they're all acclimatized. 
they got their marching orders and they're loyal to a fault. Well, then there's the press secretary, presidential liaison. She can answer all your questions. She knows what's going on. She's got the ear of the leader at his side the whole day long. She promised she would never tell a lie, I saw that. She smiled and looked us in the eye. But she's got her marching orders. And she's loyal to a fault. Well, if you praise him to the heavens, he will listen to your lies. But if you dare to contradict him, you can kiss your job goodbye. He's got attorneys and generals who beckon to his call. The highest court will always take his side. Probably 50 million in his tribe. And they got their marching orders. And they're loyal to a fault. Loyal to a fault. That's a little riff I learned uh, off of uh, Dire Straits guy. What's his name, man? How can I forget? He's a guitar hero. My memory's going. That's why I need little crib sheets for the lyrics, I guess. So this, I think, is where I settled for a key for the next one. And this tune I was thinking... Man, I'm not going to remember that group either. I got to make notes. But there was a, a group that was uh, very Americana that kind of broke into the charts. Maybe the Brothers was in the name. And they just had like a 12 string strumming it like. And they were creating these anthemic kind of pieces. So this one came to me. I call it The Wall. It's kind of set in the future. Remember that song, uh, uh, I Had a Dream, or uh, not, uh, what was it called? Something about a dream. I remember when there was a wall, and it felt like we were all at war. It was every man for himself. It was a jungle. Not to care about the guy next door It was all about having more And God help those out on the street Broke and homeless Some were living the American dream While all the others had to beg and scheme And you never knew who told the truth And who was lying but that was very long ago Before we had a peaceful world Where the pendulum finally swung And there was justice Some were thankful for the global plague Cause all the leaders put aside their hate And when they thought it was the end of the world They came together Never thought I'd see the day When all the weapons would be thrown away And with the money they saved They were able to feed the planet And then there was no need for a wall Except for kids to bounce a ball Cause the folks on either side were happy And had all they needed This song needs a bridge. But um, this was all part of my songwriting adventures over the last couple of months, and uh, I was putting it out there. You might have heard bits of this if you were watching previous Blaine casts. 
And uh, the third song is in the works, and uh, I actually uh, put a little something up last night, uh, mostly for my collaborator, uh, for Ardeen, uh, to be able to see where I'm at with the song. We're still going back and forth. We actually had a, a few Zoom sessions, and maybe we will again. It's fascinating to see a song develop. I don't know who it's fascinating to. And I'm uh, uh, wondering uh, even about... Uh, as far as fellow musicians, I wanted to talk to a lot of musicians. This is Musicians Take Note time because um, I saw a, I watched um, J.P. Cormier last night. I, I, you know, I, it's, it's funny how I came upon him because uh, he was doing these videos and I, I watched two or three because he was comparing different brands of acoustic guitars and he he was just uh, very personable. For a guy that I thought was sort of unapproachable, I don't know that I've ever seen him play live, but uh, he is a legendary picker from Nova Scotia, and now he's locked down there. And he found a way to uh, to stay home. And he says, like, considering touring, you only make about 25% uh, net uh, when you get back from a tour. It's true, the expenses and uh, is just outrageous and if you end up buying a guitar uh, that was your profit for that whole tour but uh, and he buys a lot of guitars i gather i don't i got two strats two flat tops and two rezos and that's more than i need but uh, anyway uh, he got on a rant on facebook apparently it was shared all over the place because it was really good advice for musicians, and it was his kind of state of the music. And he's not pulling any punches, and a lot of people are trying to be optimistic. But um, it's true that, uh, once again, like musicians uh, who were, and you could say club owners too, and people in the entertainment business, even the big-time bookers, uh, we're going to be uh, the last to recover, I think. And uh, musicians really have to think of ways to uh, to uh, stay alive. Uh, and um, us older guys, maybe we won't uh, be around to, uh, to uh, have to deal with it as much. But young, up-and-coming musicians, his uh, advice was YouTube. It seems like um, YouTube was the way that you could... Uh, actually make a little money and he's proven it himself uh, i don't know who gave him the initial advice but uh, from the moment he was locked down he started posting youtube videos and uh, they would be like a little instructional thing or how to play freight train or maybe talking about uh, some of his adventures on the road then he was comparing these guitars and like i said he's got a lot of them and uh, so I, for some reason, on a guitar, it popped up on my right column there on YouTube. Check this out. He's going to compare a Martin with a Boucher. So uh, I looked that up, and then I it led me to other uh, J.P. Cormier videos. And now uh, I finally uh, hear him uh, talking about how he wants to help other musicians. And he really is sincere about it. He even said, if you're in Nova Scotia and you don't have the facilities to, to do a YouTube video yourself, come over to his place, you know, and he will help you. So that's pretty amazing. And um, the uh, to put it into a nutshell, um, YouTube will uh, put, you can probably notice there's ads on YouTube now, and uh, they'll put ads on your content. Uh, but not until you have 1,000 subscribers. They want to make sure you're, uh, you've got enough people, uh, enough eyeballs, as they say. So uh, he went on a mission right from the top to gather up his 1,000 subscribers, and I think he's up to about 6,000 now. But he said at every moment, uh, first you've got to create a YouTube channel, and before that you have to be in the Google family. If you're, if you're down uh, on Google and you don't want to have anything to do with them, then this won't work for you because the advertising revenue part of it comes from Google. But, uh, and Google owns YouTube, of course. But uh, you've got a Gmail account. If you've got a Gmail account, you're in the Google system. Then you create a YouTube channel if you haven't already. And then you tell everybody to please go to your YouTube channel and click the subscribe button. And I just did it for the first time 45 minutes ago, and bingo, somebody took me up on it. I just got a little notification. 
Uh, and I got a new subscriber on my YouTube channel. I must be up to 107 now. So I've got to get to 1,000, and then they will put ads on. I never thought I'd want ads on my YouTube, but uh, when they're sharing the, the revenue from those ads with you, and when there isn't a whole lot of other revenue happening, then, uh, you know, it's not so bad. And you can skip those ads, too. I, I do. Uh, and uh, so... What else, did, what else can I pass along? He, he was talking about the technical side of it, but his bottom line was, look, if you've got a good iPhone, a decent iPhone, the mic on it's pretty good, the camera's great, and uh, you just got to keep making content. And he's, he was suggesting even just one song, put up a song, get it on YouTube, and then tell all your friends. And if you've got a, a mailing list or a, a letter like I do or on your Facebook. Oh, yeah, his, uh, his thing was you put it on YouTube and then you go to your Facebook and you put the link to the YouTube on your Facebook and you say, people, please click here to watch my latest tune. And please, while you're there, subscribe. And, uh, you know, you can also uh, be asking for people to share uh, the Facebook posts. And uh, there's a lot of things you can do up to and including donating to the PayPal and, and helping artists. But I couldn't believe when old JP said, you know, that for the last three months, or maybe it's only the most recent part of that, he's actually been able to uh, sustain himself because he has no expenses. So the money he's been making uh, from the YouTube and from donations has uh, kept him going at about the same uh, net level that he had when he was off touring. And that guy was touring all the time. So that's, um, that's a good tip uh, for musicians. You know, some people are... God, they just want to play music. And I just want to write songs. That's what I've been doing with myself. But, uh, you know, if we, if we take a little time and we just keep, that's what he was doing. He was putting out one clip after another. And they were interesting. They were fun to watch. And uh, I'm going to try to do the same thing. I've been, these, uh, these broadcasts I've been doing are more like half an hour, 45 minutes. I've been but I'm, I've got them segmented, and uh, so now I, I should really have a section now for uh, uh, musicians take note. That's what we used to call it in the uh, Maple Blues newsletter. We uh, we were always uh, with where to get a grant or uh, how to get this or that. And now we need all the help we can get. And uh, JP, thank you on behalf of uh, all the musicians that are going to benefit from your sage advice. Uh, I've tried to uh, get people uh, at least interested in this. If you want to know the whole story, go to J.P. Cormier's Facebook and read his uh, rant there or uh, go to his YouTube channel and subscribe. Come to my YouTube channel and subscribe. Share this. And uh, let me uh, now share with you uh, one, uh, one little adventure I had uh, at um, the at the old mill, I was playing my campfire jam there for three years, and uh, many a time I uh, I had guests from all over the country, and I guess I might have even had a few Americans coming through, maybe one Brit, and um, I was uh, usually had a camera rolling, and uh, I was capturing uh, a pretty rough video. You'll you'll see for yourself, but. Uh, I want you to watch uh, my buddy Harb Dog Brown. And there's a guy who was like at the top of his game and uh, just won some awards and uh, got a fabulous manager agent. And he would, I'm sure the tour his whole summer was probably locked up. And boom, comes the virus. So uh, here's a little bit of what Harb Dog and us were doing. He had Jordy Edmonds with him and... Uh, who else was playing? Michelle was playing drums. Uh, I think that was Michelle playing drums. Anyway, I'll, I'll remind myself when I see this happening. So I'm going to click over to share that screen with you. And uh, it's been uh, a nice visit and uh, maybe a little shorter than most. And uh, I, I was watching Nick Moss doing his uh, streaming just before and I uh, just got a notification that there's another great stream coming up. Check out uh, the artist's streams, support them, uh, and uh, try to keep us alive. Because 
As Carlos Santana said, and as I quoted in this month's Blaine letter, uh, music uh, brings light to the darkness. And uh, so we're having a little bit of a dark period. So uh, let's uh, use uh, whatever we got to, to uh, lighten things up. And that's my specialty, lightening it up. So here's, uh, here's a bit of the Campfire uh, cameo. And uh, we'll be back next Sunday uh, with uh, the third song of the Trump trilogy. It's called Stolen. And uh, I'm going to try to have it finished by then. Did you catch that, Ardeen? I want to have, have that song done by next Sunday so we can share it with the folks. Thanks for watching and enjoy uh, the uh, Campfire Jam. And I hope I click all the right buttons so you have sound and video and all of that. Share the computer sound. Optimize the screen. Go to the thing. Share it. Wait, I need to probably turn myself off first. Well, let's see. I'll stop my video. And I'm going to say goodbye, and here we go. I guess I'm going to just leave it like this and uh, start her up. If you hear me breathing, then... Maybe you don't have to go. No. Actually, one, two, three. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh,
just back of my bag, darling. Now I only know that I'll go. I want Jesse to come along with me too. life on the road and about you know traveling living out of suitcase that sort of thing you know. remember I said 37 years ago I figured this was the best circus to, to, to join you know the, the blues circus and um, so I wrote this song about life on the road in fact I was on the side of the road when I wrote it 3.30 in the morning Sunday morning Saturday night downtown Portland well police station passenger side. I was in the passenger side when the song came to me. A song called Home is Where the Heart Is. This is a song? Yeah. Okay, cool. Song. He's got your back. Yeah, man. Literally. <laughs> he went back there and watched my bags. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
all about. Please welcome Billy, Billy Royal, and Drew. Give it up for Billy Strings and Band. Thank you. Thanks a lot.